My name is Adam Gonzalez, and we're in Telegraph Mastering in Portland, Oregon. Uh, over here we have a fully restored ATR 102 half inch and quarter inch tape machine for clients who want to work entirely in the analog domain and uh, just work straight from tape. Right here is the console, uh, equalization, compression, limiting, and some custom processors are all here. And over here is uh, the disc cutting system, our lathe. And this is where uh, master lacquers are cut for vinyl records. So this part of the lathe is called the cutter head. And this red shank, I'm not sure how, how well it's showing up uh, on your camera, but there's a sharpened red shank there, and that's a, that's a ruby, a, a, a sharpened ruby. And the ruby is heated, and uh, the signal, the program signal, is fed into the cutter head, and the ruby is the element that does the actual cutting. If this is the step where you have to really, you know, sweat the details. So okay. I'm going to fire it up for you. Yeah, great. <laughs> the first thing that you need when you are cutting is a disc to cut on. We are going to grab a disc right here. So the first thing that we're going to do with this disc is clean it off with some compressed nitrogen. There we go. There are several systems that work in tandem uh, on a on a lathe. Uh, there's obviously the motor and the turntable. There's a vacuum system. The vacuum mm -hmm. system does two things. The first thing that the vacuum system does is suck the disc flat to the turntable. Again, we're, we're cutting the master here. So there can't be any wobble in the disc. So the vacuum system sucks the disc completely flush with the turntable mm -hmm. uh, so that when you're cutting it, the disc is completely flat. So no wobble will be replicated in all of the discs that you have. Right. Um, so there's these pilot holes in the turntable. And depending on what size you select from this uh, center um, vacuum selection wheel, uh, it opens or closes the pilot holes, which are connected to the vacuum system. And when you turn the vacuum on, you'll hear it. And so the, the holes that are closer to the center are the ones that are used for 7-inch cuts. The holes that are on the outer diameters are the ones that are used for cutting 12-inch lockers. Wow. So we put that on here. And then the third element that we have here is the heater. And that's what applies heat to the ruby, mm -hmm. uh, because the ruby cuts hot into the lacquer. So the second thing, speaking of a hot ruby, that the uh, vacuum system does is you'll notice a hose on the side of the, cu side of the cutter head. And that is for uh, sucking up all the little pieces of lacquer that get kicked up as you cut. Mm -hmm. um, and so that stuff is sucked away and put into a receptacle behind the back of the lane. Kind of like a... Like when you go to go see the dentist. <laughs> right. <I> mean, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And that stuff is actually called Hot Chip. Okay. And that is where the band name came from. Oh, we that's do great. know that one. That's great. Uh, so, we'll turn the vacuum on. Uh, and because we live in Portland and uh, the air here is very moist, it's good to treat the vacuum line with a little bit of talc. Mm -hmm. because you don't want the chip to stick in this tube. Um, it does come off warm. It could clog the tube up. Um, it could potentially start a fire. So it's good for the chip to move through the, the tube as smoothly as possible. And a little bit of talc helps with that. Now, we're going to clean off our cutter head with just the tiniest bit of some acetone. And we'll apply heat and adjust the heat so that it's right in the sweet spot where it needs to be. Spin up the turntable and engage the speed. Uh, speed here is set manually. And so there's different adjustments that you need to make when you're cutting. Uh, the two main adjustments are pitch and depth. So depth is how deep in the, uh, the Ruby stylus is cutting into your lacquer, which uh, manifests itself as to how wide the grooves are. Mm -hmm. So the deeper you cut, the wider the groove goes. The depth is set by this adjustment here, and the pitch 
is uh, controlled by this adjustment. Um, and both of these are continuously variable and you adjust them during the cut as is needed based on the program material. And pitch is how close the grooves are together. So uh, you need to, s to conserve space uh, generally to stack the grooves relatively close to one another, but not so close that they'll overrun uh, because if you have uh, an overcut, that will manifest itself as a skip. There's, I, I, with the exception of very, very short records, which are very easy to cut, yeah. um, there's usually some negotiation happening uh, uh, if, between pitch and depth. You know, for example, on uh, the loudest song on the record, or certainly the songs that are on the inner diameter, there's adjustments that need to be made to mm -hmm. make sure that everything's going to fit properly and play back without distortion or trouble. So is that something, do you do, how do you do this then? Do you do one track at a time or are you, are you doing things in, in real time as it's coming through? You, once you drop the cutter head, you're on. I see. There's no way to lift it because remember what we're doing is cutting a continuous path for a playback needle to follow. Right. So if we interrupt that path, the needle would stop. And uh, if you dropped it exactly back on the same groove that you had just lifted off of, there would be an audible, you would be able to hear that. It would it would manifest itself as distortion. Sure. So, uh, and you probably wouldn't be able to land it exactly on the same group. You'd probably be off a little bit. Right. So, so when you're cutting, then does it happen in basically the length of the record? Is that how long it takes? You cut in real time. So we're gonna do a test cut really quick, uh, just to show you how things play in real time. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, uh, you can see that there's no groove currently uh, on the lacquer. I'm going to drop the head here and you're going to watch a little line appear. You see that line there? That is our test group. So I'm going to bring our tone arm over and drop it into that group. So the next thing I'm going to do is check the depth and pitch of the groove that we're cutting. And knowing that this is a very long record, I'm going to have to adjust our pitch upward to squeeze the uh, grooves closer into each other okay. to make sure that everything has enough room. Uh, and also make sure that the groove is of sufficient depth to be able to handle uh, the level that we're going to be cutting at and just some of the vagaries, uh, specifically dynamic changes of the program material. And I know that... Uh, from having worked on this material before, you know, mm -hmm. having uh, uh, prepared it before. So we're actually going to listen to uh, the playback from this needle. So what we're listening to is the actual fresh groove that we're cutting right now. And so I'm making an adjustment for the chorus. One of the great things about vinyl, um, it sounds fantastic uh, when it's, you know, when things swell up and it's and uh, and you've given it space to do that. It's, you know, one of the best ways to listen to music.